Hunter Monologues, D. McClung, hey, you've already heard the news, haven't you? If you haven't heard the news by the time you hear this, uh, you must have been, like, sleeping <clears throat> a long time. Anyway, I should probably check the news this morning to see, what, see what's going on today. Maybe I just dreamed that Donald Trump actually won the election. Actually, I did have a dream or two this morning because I was only asleep like for about three hours and I woke up saying, really? <clears throat> Anyhow, but I'm talking about my dream, not, uh, you know, not, uh, not the election. I don't think I was dreaming about the election. I hope not. I mean, bad enough being alive, I mean awake, <clears throat> and having to listen to the election and voting and stuff because it's just like what unbelievable it would have been nice if my guy had won but um, um, I don't think he was running actually my guy so I didn't have any choice well I didn't vote for those yahoos anyway guarantee you see I have a principle that I you know, there's principles in the world, and you know, you kind of have these are the principles that I live by. Like, one of them is don't murder people. And um, if uh, you're running for president and you've murdered people or caused people to be murdered, like, as, as let's say, a government official, like a secretary of state kind of person, uh, and you've murdered, caused people to be murdered, you've had hit squads called Marines or whatever go to another country and murder people, uh, and they wonder why they hate us. Hmm. And, they want, and you wonder why they hate us, you fucking retard. Uh, I'm guessing because we murdered them, families and stuff, and they're like invaded their country, and they probably get pretty pissed off. You'd be, let's say, a bunch of uh, uh, Afghanistanians I know, uh, have you know, like, got on some planes and some boats and shit and helicopters and came into your country America, let's say, and just landed their helicopter in the front yard of your house and then stormed into your house in the middle of the night and shot you in the fucking face. Uh, wouldn't your family be just a little bit pissed? I mean, you know, your family, your next door neighbors, your fellow Americans would like, hey, what the fuck? And they would like want to get guns and come and get you if you had done that. Or had ordered that happening. You know, like, oh, hell are you it caused my family to be murdered. I'm going to come and kill you. In revenge, because I'm allowed. It's called justice. You know, you kill me, I am allowed to kill you. That's just a rule. Uh, it's just a rule. It's like nature. Um, <clears throat> we're not going to apply that to killing meat for cows, like to eat, because that would be that would be just freaky. Hey, all the cows hate us, and they're going to come into our house. Because cows can't fly helicopters, as far as I know. So, I'm not even going to go there. However, I don't vote for people, for government office, who I have evidence of them <laughs> committing a crime against humanity. Uh, which, you know, Hillary Clinton is guilty of that. Because the evidence says so. Um, I don't really have a the right to carry out that sentence. You know, the one for genocide and stuff like that. I mean, <sighs> and acts of terrorism against people of foreign countries and mass murder of men, women, and children, innocent people that are just living in their country, minding no business, and boom, boom, smithereens. Um, you know, anyway. And then there's Gaddafi, but we'll, you know what. So what I'm saying is, um, I don't vote for people that do that. 
and so um, I'm not going to vote for people like Hillary because um, she's guilty. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, no, wouldn't vote for Hillary if she was the last person on the planet. <clears throat> in fact, if she was the last woman on the planet, I'm almost 100% certain I wouldn't fuck her. <clears throat> as desperate as I might be, I would not fuck her if she's the last woman on Earth. Um, though I'm quite sure there are quite a few men that would. And maybe a few women, since she would probably like that. Oh, I wouldn't be murdered by a lesbian, because I'm a lesbian dyke, bull dyke person. Fuck me to death, fuck me to death, because I'm a lesbian. Ah, oh, I have some unsubstantiated, unconfirmed, supposedly valid evidence that maybe Hillary is a dyke. Um, I won't go so far as to say a child molester, because I have no evidence of that. None. Zip. And if she was guilty of having sex with teenage girls, I mean, uh, not my business. And I'm not going to, uh, sorry, but I'm just not going to condone that sort of thing. But, I mean, I'm not going to condone people accusing her of having sex with, you know, teenage people. Because, at this point, that would be a lie. Since I have no evidence. I, personally, don't have any. There may be evidence. Somebody else might have it. I don't have it. There's some insinuation and innuendo that, oh, she went to Sex Slave Island with her Billy Clinton guy, her husband, for some reason. Six times, by the way. Why am I still talking about this cunt? I'm pathetic. <laughs> <coughs> well, I don't believe I've ever actually said what I'm saying now, so it's not like I'm being redundant. I am suggesting, though, that um, it's not a crime to have sex. Because it's natural. And nature, nature has its own laws, and those laws trump, uh, well, I shouldn't say trump in, in this case, should I? Uh, trump Trump's Clinton. <laughs> uh, it's funny. A little bit funny. Anyway, um, I was at the voting voting poll yesterday, yesterday, and uh, that would be Tuesday, the, the day you're supposed to be doing that. And uh, the, the people that, you know, check you out and make sure that you're all legit and everything and give you a little, and, you know, <laughs> uh, she said, you should be a comedian. And I said, uh, I am a comedian. And uh, there's my cat. Uh, so I'll just keep talking from afar while I open the door and let the kitty out. All right, you can still hear me. It, it doesn't hurt to take a break and walk away from the, from the mic a little bit. Because uh, the mic's probably good enough to pick it up. And I might have, you know, been over there. But you, I wasn't saying anything important anyway. While I was over there getting the cat out, I got cats, two cats. Don't call me a pussy lover. Yes, I am. Uh, hmm. Anyway, she said, "Yeah, I'm a comedian." I said, "Yeah," and uh, um, I didn't want to, you know, hang around and just chit chat with these people because uh, I was there to vote and then get out because there are other people ahead of me and other people behind me and you know they don't want to be bothered with my. Uh, my chit chat <clears throat> as important as it may be uh, but yeah I do consider myself a comedian and unfortunately sometimes people laugh at me when I'm not being funny I mean not intentionally exercising or practicing my one of my occupations as a comedian And sometimes my my humor is a bit subtle, 
and uh, dark, and uh, sometimes it just night like, goes shoot over your head, you know, shoot over their head, you know. That reminds me, Bill Hicks with a with a uh, what was it? To the left and back, to the left and back, or something like that. However that goes. I've watched the McGruder film like a hundred times, maybe more, and it's always the same. It's like his head goes back, and the back of his head blows out. I mean, uh, excuse me, I am almost 100% certain that that bullet did not go in the back of his head and out the front of his head because if it did... I think I would have seen his face explode because that's the way bullets operate. They don't go, I don't know, over your head, do a, you know, 360 and come back and hit you in the face. They just, no, they just, bullets don't work that way. Well, maybe in the movies. I saw this movie one time where the bullet was like a guided missile. You know, you shot it out of the gun. looked like a regular little, like a 9 millimeter pistol. Like, you know, and you just pull it, not a pistol, but a, you know, automatic, whatever. And handgun. And he shot the and the bullet was going, nee, 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 nee. It's not like the missiles. You see them in the movies where the missiles going, meow, you know, like a, like a shark or something, or a porpoise or whatever. And, you know, and it meanders around and, goes over the hills and around and over and through and under and around and and then you go hide behind a, a, a mountain on your freaking helicopter or whatever and it, and it goes around and finds you and boom blows you up as opposed to a real bullet in real life that goes straight and might go down a little bit because of gravity but straight and it doesn't go in loops and around corners and shit. That happens in the movies. And I don't think they made bullets that can do that yet. Maybe there's missiles that they fire, you know, them ICBMs or whatever they call them. So what I'm saying is, uh, I have principles. And they're basic principles that, you know, are like universal principles. You know, like, murdering people is bad. Defending yourself is good. Uh, defending your country is good if it's the United States government and the military from these countries, you know, the American, you know, dumbass Americans joining up the military to go over to foreign countries and murder people. Like, I'm sorry, if you don't see it that way, you're a fucking idiot. Oh, I got my voice up. It's too early to be talking like that. Uh, but seriously, if, if you think if you think it's all right, you know, to join up the military of the United States of America, the terrorist organization known as the United States government, and uh, run by a bunch of freaking insane maniac criminals and shit, and I'm sure you know Rothschilds in there somewhere. I know the Rockefellers play a big part in what goes on in this country, and. Uh, by the way, governor of West Virginia, new governor, is named Jim Justice. And I'm guessing that maybe Justice isn't part of his game plan. Really. Perhaps. Maybe. <clears throat> so we'll find out. We'll see. We're going to keep an eye on the new governor when he takes office and see what he's going to be up to. Because if he's... If he's up to no good... I'm going to let people know uh, here and there and everywhere and other places <laughs> because I don't like the last I don't like the current governor Tomlin that man's a fucking Nazi bastard committed treason though I have never heard anybody say so which is really weird because you think when some guy like is the leader uh, or the number one guy in, in public government office in a state like West Virginia and he's the number one guy he's the number one top dog government guy and he does a criminal treasonous act <clears throat> that affects you know all the people in West Virginia then you know I think there would be more than just me 
you know, bitching about it. I think it would be like everybody in West Virginia would be bitching about it. Well, I suppose you'd have to exclude the, you know, morons and the idiots and the traitors and, you know, the freaking brain dead people. A lot of brain dead people in West Virginia. Zombies walking around saying, hey, I'm going to vote for this Nazi bastard pig motherfucker. <clears throat> okay, fine. Uh, there will be consequences. Uh, for one, I'll shun you if you're a bastard. <clears throat> so, um, what else is going on? What else is going on? Did I already? This is the second show of the day, and it's not even nine o'clock yet. Awesome. I only had three hours sleep, so I'm going to get real tired sometime during the day and that's a shame because I got lots of things to do uh, lots of things well I always have lots of things it doesn't mean I do them you know sometimes I like saying hey, I'll have a siesta big deal I'll take a nap first which is new because in the old days I just go to bed at whatever time and sleep seven hours wake up and go to work and do stuff nowadays it's like go to bed at some point and sleep for a while wake up and then after a bit take a nap I think that's what happens when you get old. And I'm not old, but, you know, it does bother me a bit. All right. And I'm talking, which is unusual, too, because, you know, usually I first get up in the morning and I get and wash the face and do the routine and have a cup of tea, sit down, and, uh, well, usually nowadays I just get, you know, my cup of tea and I sit down and I... Uh, Check my emails and the newsletters and you know, different things. You know, I don't really talk. In fact, at this point in the past, if I was like uh, just up, well, I've been up for a couple hours or so. Uh, I wouldn't talk. I might grunt, you know, like, Ugh. but things change, people change, and you get older, and things are different. And now it's like, oh, it's nap time. And, uh, and you take a nap whether you like it or not. <clears throat> well, I usually like it, but I didn't actually volunteer to close my eyes and go to sleep. You'd think, oh, it's like 90 or something. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm getting there. Hopefully. So anyway, what else are we going to talk about? Uh, we talked about Trump. Hillary, we talked about cops, and we talked about in the last segment, and we talked about my mail being dropped off at the post office instead of the freaking guy bringing his truck like half a mile up the road from the post office and giving it to me by, you know, putting it in my hand. It wasn't like I wasn't home. Uh, okay, I don't want to get on that again. I already did that, but I'm definitely going to have a conversation with these people. Why did you just leave it at my house? Because you know, I was there. <clears throat> Signed at the front desk. Where? I don't have a front. The desk at the post office, I assume. And I'm assuming the postmaster's name is Underwood, since he signed for it. Or she. Whoever. Doesn't say which it is. A male person. <laughs> Maybe a woman person. I don't know. I wasn't there. Anyhow, let's just say... Um, okay, I'm going to take a break and then see what else is going on. Okay, and then I'll get back to you in a couple minutes. Just it, It'll be like two seconds, really, in real time, but my time it might be ten minutes. All right, later. See there? It was like, bing, bing, I'm back. But it was like three minutes. All right, so uh, let me see. When I'm thinking about something else, let's just think about this websites we call social media and different kinds of whatever they are. Uh, Quora, Q U O R A, Quora. Uh, it's a place where they, I think I talked about this the other day. Uh, you can post questions and then smart people that know the answers will answer you uh, on this website. And sometimes they aren't smart and they don't answer you. And they 
because sometimes if I ask a question, it's like, I don't understand. They don't know. They don't say it, but it's like, they don't understand what I said. Like, What's the question? And they'll like answer the question that I didn't ask, and they'll answer the opposite of whatever I asked. And it's really confusing to me because how can anybody be so dumb? It's English. I mean, what's so hard to understand about English? If you're English and you spoke English all your life, I know. <clears throat> I'm guessing you should be able to read what I say. Seriously. You can't read English. You can't read me. If you don't understand what I said, you're just not paying attention. <clears throat> That's like, you know, the, the, I asked one time, it was like a survey question I did on the internet, social media places, and I said, uh, here's the question. Here's the survey question. Uh, how much dirt is in a hole four feet feet, four feet by four feet by four feet? And that was question. I put it on there, and you know, how many answers did I get? You know, I got a couple, and the answer was like, uh, oh, I don't understand the question. Uh, well, it's a perfectly logical question. It's in English. There weren't any really big words in it. Uh, how much dirt's in a hole, etc. I mean, what's hard about that? What person over the age of, what, six doesn't understand what I just said there when I said that? How much dirt's in a hole? And how many people can't figure out, how long does it take you to figure this out? Like, uh, I gave you some numbers, four by four by four, but it's not really that kind of a question. The question was, how much dirt is in a hole? Never got the right answer. Didn't, not one person gave the right answer, uh, which is uh, just in case you should ever hear the question, you would be able to say, uh, it's a hole, therefore it has nothing in it, because that's why it's called a hole, because it doesn't have dirt in it. In the whole space, I mean, at the bottom might be dirt, the sides might be dirt, but the hole has no dirt, because it's a fucking hole. It's a word. It's English. Look it up in the dictionary. See what the word hole means. Of course, in American society today, it's like, oh, it must be like the opposite of hole, which is the word hole now means uh, not a hole. <clears throat> Seriously. There's a whole lot of words in English that people use that are actually originated in England and Germany and Greek and Latin and you know various places like that and uh, but they're English now because English for reasons and so uh, there's a lot of examples of those kind of words used that are misused abused actually by people who are illiterate or they're working for the socialist collective agenda which is in leagues with the freaking neocons by the way Neocon Socialist Alliance, which is surprising me why Donald Trump actually lived long enough to be elected, which is kind of weird, which is good, but, you know, the neocons are like socialists, are like murdering bastards. Anyway, they had this agreement, we're going to like run the country like we own it, <clears throat> kind of thing, and for the Rothschilds, because they said, yeah, you go ahead and run it for him, yeah, I'm kind of busy, you know taking over the rest of the world, whatever. Uh, you can be my hired hitman, you can be my pawn, says Mr. Rothschild, you know. Criminals, I'm just saying. So anyway, uh, I asked the question, how much dirt's in a hole? And like, weren't you listening? It's English, how much dirt is in a hole? That's a very simple question. No, you know, oh, you're leading us on, you're committing some kind of deception here. No, I said exactly what I meant. How much dirt is in a fucking hole? The answer is clear, obvious, and it shouldn't take you more than about a nanosecond to come up with the answer to that. Uh, none. <clears throat> I was a young person, I was a boy at the time. My father asked me that, and I wasn't really prepared for him to say things that I had to think about at that point, and uh, I probably was thinking about, oh, I think I'd like to go downtown, get some dope, smoke some pot, and fuck some girls or something. That's probably what was I thinking about at the time. Or that I should have been instead of there at home with my dad. Which, I love my dad, don't get me wrong, but, you know, I like pussy, too. Well, then, 
I really love to go see a lot. I was obsessed with it. So I was probably thinking, yeah, yeah, Dad, how you going? And I was standing there beside him, and I was saying, you know. So he told me that, how much dirt's in the hole, and I was you know, like, let me figure that out. And I said, I can't really figure that out in my head really good. I might I might just take a piece of paper. Right? And then he's, what are you doing? I'm writing it down, and I'm working out. What are you working out? I just told you. It's, it's a hole. And he, he was nice about it, and he kind of chuckled because he pulled one over. He got me on that one because I was, like, trying to figure it out by using the numbers that are totally irrelevant to the question, but still, we think it is, and that's the way it is for most people, Americans anyway. Oh, let's just assume that what he said was what we thought we heard him say, which is we apparently didn't hear him say. You, uh, if you're trying to figure out how much dirt's in a hole for before before, you're probably you're probably like doing a little math there and trying to figure it out. And, you're probably, and even now, even after I told you, the numbers are irrelevant. It's not a math problem. It's a pay attention to the words problem. I'll be back in a second. All right. English. Okay, so um, there are words, and they mean what they mean. This is important to understand this. Words mean what they mean. Because if they don't mean what they mean, then they might mean nothing. Which means you're just blabbering. Like a bloody blathering fool. Chair. Babble is what I'm talking about. Babbling. And that's what it sounds like to me a lot of times. People are like, uh, you idiot. And you know, I'm like, well, I got the idiot part. You're calling me an idiot, you bastard. You freaking idiot. What? You're an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I'm like freaking genius. I'm a bragging. I'm just saying, by comparison, it's absurd to say that I'm an idiot because I'm not. And it's just as absurd to say, uh, you're not speaking English, when I know damn well I am. It's like talking to chickens sometimes. It's like, quack, 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 quack. And I'm like, uh, there is no law making it unless liable to the income tax. And you're going, quack, 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 quack. And I'm like, oh, just shut the fuck up, duck, chicken, thing. Cry out loud. Well, there isn't any law making us lie, unless you're a corporation, because those, those are the only only thing. That's the only thing that you can. That's the only thing that's liable for the income tax, because corporations it says so in a law. Come on, read it. It's English. You know English. So anyway, get get Dave Champion's book if you want to know some truth and some facts and some. Um, you know, some highly intelligent information for you to help make your life a better thing to live and you, you know you won't be like walking around like a freaking mindless zombie and uh, Dave Champion's book Income Tax Shattering the Myths he ought to give me a cut for advertising all this time for him I'm, I'm going to keep advertising a damn good book and you ought to get it you ought to read. it should be required reading for every high school student in America Fat chance that's going to happen. But at any rate, the point is, uh, I've got three hours sleep behind me here, and I've been up for about two hours or so, and I'm going to um, get tired left or right. So, uh, I don't have anything to do, you know, I can't take any bennies or pip pills or energy drinks or any of that shit to keep going because I don't do that stuff. been many many decades since I did any chemicals like for recreation or for practical reasons uh, you know like marijuana and speed and things like that uh, many many decades so far in the past that I can barely remember it well I, I can't really I can I've got a good memory I can remember the details like 50 years later but that's beside the point all right. So Donald Trump is going to be the president. It's going to be interesting, and I'm not going to Canada. 
<laughs> I didn't even go to Canada when they were threatening to, to put me in prison for refusing to go and to be drafted. And, you know, and it really irks me because they say things like, ah, he's a draft dodger. You know, like, that's a bad thing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The United States government, military, is a bad thing. And if they're trying to get me to go into the military and, like, we're got, you're drafted, then you have to do what you're told because you're not free. You know, involuntary servitude is a crime. And actually, if you engage in involuntary servitude and you're the government, you're guilty of treason, and, you know, the crime is uh, a capital crime, and you should be, eh, you know, made, made into tree ornaments. You know, in other words, by, you know, a rope, by your neck, until you're dead. Uh, sorry, but that's just the way it works. That's, that's the concept. That, that's the reality of it. It doesn't work that way in America, because Americans are stupid. Most of them. A lot of them. Okay, not, maybe not most. Odd. I know 49% of, I know, four, how many? 49 million? I know 49 million stupid people. They voted for Hillary. I'm not going to go into that, oh, voting for the lesser of two evils things. And what annoys me is, ah, there's another guy running. He's on uh, another party, like the third party, and uh, why don't you vote for him if you don't like the other two? I mean, isn't that the whole idea? Vote for the guy or woman that you think is best suited to be president? And, you know, that kind of shares your ideals and so on? Oh, I'm not even going to say family values. That's just bullshit. But anyway, uh, isn't that the whole idea of an election is to pick the guy you think, you know, vote for the guy you think or gal that you think would make a good president and do right things and obey the law and obey the constitution and not commit treason and murder and shit like that uh, I know Hillary would commit murder and shit like that because she's already done it as secretary of state and stuff so besides she's married to Bill Clinton duh <laughs> I don't know Vince Foster <clears throat> sorry and over 50 other people and 74 people that were doing no harm to anybody in Waco and who are now burned to death on frickin' bacon because of Janet Reno and Hillary Clinton and other evil, monstrous, demony, psychopaths, motherfuckers. Anyway, all right. Yeah, there's some evidence that she's responsible for the death of 74 innocent men and women and children in fucking Waco. And, uh,. Uh, you don't have to tell me twice. I probably, I'm going to guess, you, yeah, that's true. I'm guessing. Don't have any evidence in front of me. So can't, can't tell you that evidence right at the moment. So, just, that's my, I don't care. If you will believe it or don't have to believe it. It's up to you. I don't, I'm, I don't have any control over you. Uh, you know, the Rothschilds may, and the, the Mindbenders and the Socialist Collective Agenda may, but uh, I don't, because you can believe me or not. You can laugh at me and call me bad names and all kind of shit. That's funny though. My when is it uh, voting thing the other day? Yesterday, just yesterday, mind you, not not the other day, yesterday. And uh, sitting there getting you know clocked in to to do the vote thing at the desk and uh, and uh, my dear w wonderful woman, best friend and companion. Uh, said uh, he, he's, he's not he, he, well he wants to be you're trying he wants to be and uh, then she said something that was really kind of threw me for a loop because I'm like huh and she said uh, I'm going to paraphrase here because I don't remember exact words maybe could be uh, I let him play and I'm like what and she says I let him play and you know and he comes back or whatever uh, what See, the implication is, when you say that to about your man, it's like, oh, I let him play. And if you're a grown man that she's talking about, like, like not a six-year-old or something, uh, I mean, if, if a mother says to the kid, you know, says to someone, oh, my, my kid, he's a good kid. He's five years old, and, uh, and and he likes to be naughty, but I let him play. And, you know, he goes out, and he plays in the dirt, and plays with his toys, and he comes back, and he's all dirty and shit. Uh, but I love him anyway. But... When you say something to a grown about a grown man like uh, I let him play, and he wants to be naughty, and he, uh, he uh, 
I don't impl- that's implying that she lets me go out and, you know, fuck other women. Uh, I was just wondering if she actually realized it, and I haven't actually got to talk to her about it at all. I, I mentioned it, and she chuckled. But I'm just not sure. Uh, but I'm sure the people that were there, I'm just uh, half a dozen people at least in earshot, and probably heard her say that, and I'm like, they, you didn't know what you just said? You just pretty much implied that I fuck around and I fuck other women and then you let me do that and get away with it because you're a really open-minded woman. But she is kind of open-minded. But I don't think she's really that open-minded as I recall from past experiences. Uh, Not that I ever did fuck other women while I was with her, you know, in 12 years. Like, have you ever fucked another woman? Um, well, I've been naughty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I admit to that. Do you want to be naughty? I actually sometimes I do want to be naughty. That doesn't necessarily mean that I, I want to be naughty doesn't follow through to I actually was naughty in, in a way that was contradictory to the rules that somehow got imposed upon me as a free man. I I, don't know, I there's a rule against that? I didn't know. Uh, but apparently there is certain rules that I wasn't aware of <clears throat> until later. But anyway, uh, when she said that, I kind of like, huh? <coughs> and when we got home, I mentioned to her, and she kind of chuckled, and I said, those women that were at the poll voting place uh, heard you say that and probably thought that you were open-minded and you know you had sort of an open marriage kind of thing and we don't we actually marriage is not a word we use but anyway um, I, 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 I'm naughty and I play around with other women and have sex with them and shit and then but she forgives me or t- lets me get away with it or something something you know what I what you shouldn't say things like that in public because people get the wrong idea because they don't understand English sometimes even though what she said is true I mean, naughty. I don't, I don't mean having sex with other women, but it is true that I do want to be naughty, and sometimes I am naughty. And, it, and since I know what the word naughty means, <laughs> it doesn't bother me any, and apparently it doesn't bother her either, because she probably understands what the word naughty means too, as well. So, uh, but those people at the polling booth, some of them were older, elderly kind of people, and they probably have no clue, you know. But she was, she didn't mean that. That, that that I was naughty with other girls, you know, women, uh, and she's okay with that. Because she's not, and I know this for a fact. Even though she should be, because I'm not doing anything wrong. Naughty, yes. Wrong, no. Crime, no. <clears throat> Anyhow, I got a kick out of it, but at the same time, like. Do you realize what you just said to these people? Heard you say that now they're going to think really weird things about me. It's not true. Well, maybe not true. (laughs) Maybe not. The implication may be not true. And it may be true. I don't know. I'm not going to say. It's none of your business. Uh, It's my business. Just my business. Nobody else. So maybe I'm naughty, and maybe I'm naughty in the wrong way, maybe I'm naughty in just a normal, casual way, and maybe I'm just naughty because I'm a a prick, (laughs) or a jerk, and uh, maybe not, because I'm not on trial here, I'm just talking to you, because I'm talking about something, so I'm telling you that, so I thought that was humorous, in a way. Coming up on 40 minutes, I'm going to have to end this segment again, already, yes, time flies. Actually, time doesn't go anywhere. It just kind of runs real fast <laughs> through midair. Anyway, <clears throat> all right, gonna stop a minute and sum up my uh, thoughts and see if there's anything I want to say in closing out this segment because I've got exactly five minutes and twenty seconds. I'll be back in a second. Hold up. Welcome again, everyone. Bill and Jim here. Right. We have a very special Jim guest. Sinclair. You all pretty much know him. Uh, he's 
one of the interviewers, and we're going to interview the interviewer. We have Greg Hunter with us. Greg, how are you? Doing good. I'm doing doing good. I'm, I'm pleased to be on it. I love you both, Jim Sinclair and Bill Holter. I love you guys. Well, we got you on the other side of the desk at this on this one. We're, we're going to be we're going to be grilling you. All right, get fire on. away. Get on it. Get on with it. I guess the best place to start off uh, because it's just so blatantly obvious. We've pretty much lost the rule of law here in the United States, and we've completely lost. The media. Um, it's it's almost as if the the alt media has supplanted the old media, and the old media is is like uh, Pravda or TASS or uh, you know they're they're basically cheerleaders for for the left. And you were a a uh, journalist with it was CNN and ABC, right? Correct. Okay. Um, Back in the old days, there was a press. The press might lean one way or the other, but not like today. Correct. You're correct. So, how did it get this way? Uh, tell us about the old days. Tell us what you you know where you think it is now. I I was hired to be a, an investigative reporter at uh, ABC, uh, actually by Diane Sawyer, and. Um, and that's what I did. And I was so, I mean, I, uh, just to let you know, this idea that the reporters are in charge and they just put anything they want on the air, on the New York Times, that, that's total BS. I never walked by the control room and looked at Shelley Roth, the executive producer of CNN, at, uh, at Good Morning America, and said, hey, I got a great story this morning. Where do you see it on the air for the first time? It'll be a great surprise. That never happened. Right. Ever. It's always seen ahead of time. Never. She didn't escorted me out of the building for that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have got there. They wouldn't have sent a limo to pick me up. Oh, Are you kidding me? And, uh, you know, I mean, it was, I, uh, and I'll tell you how anal it was as an investigative reporter. Um, just so you understand how the level of, sp so when you see this going on in the press, it's not something small. I would go out and do, and I did, I did big stories, I did, I did money stories, I did consumer stories, I did, I did death people where people died and could, you know, get the network sued. I did, I went after the Pentagon for depleted uranium. I went after the housing market for, uh, for the fraud in the housing, we had to call it robo signing, which is total. It was forgery, perjury, and fraud on the court. Produced the, the note. These guys didn't have the notes. They couldn't prove they owned the houses. Anyway, I would, uh, and this is both at CNN and at ABC, very similar procedures. We would do an interview with, uh, let's say we were going to confront somebody about something they did, and they were going to have an interview, and they were going to sit down with us, and, and we would, uh, you know, shoot the interview, and then we'd send it off to a transcription service, and then we would send, with our script, if we were finished, a transcription of every interview we had. And the lawyers would go over it, and standards, sometimes standards, you know, that would usually be a pre-thing, but standards where I do, we, should we use our cannon to, you know, get this, you know, this popcorn vendor, one guy on the street, should we ruin him? That, you know, that's, that, I'm, I'm making that up, but, but we would send the, the script over, here's what we want to say, here's our interviews, and they would go over the sound bites, and the lawyers would look at the sound bites in context to what they said, and, and they would adjust or adjust the script or say, well, well, hold on a minute. Uh, there was one time where we actually had a guy who was a former preacher who was, who was cheating people. I can't remember exactly. I, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, and I don't really. I don't want to name him because I don't want to get into into the weeds here. But it was a preacher. He, he was cheating people, and I started the interview. And in the first minute, he said, "Yeah, that's right. I cheated him. I'm, I, I cheated him. I did." Now later in the interview, he said, "Well, I cheated him, but I didn't mean to." Guess what? The attorneys, when we turned in the transcript of that, so we used the sound bite of, "Yeah." I did it. I cheated them. All right, that was a tease, and that was compliments of BrassJackTV.com, and uh, they send a lot of good stuff. And I'm up at the end of my segment here, but I just wanted to start that, and uh, we'll talk about that. It's uh, an hour long. I can't do it on any one show, so I'm going to spread it out. So I'll talk to you later, and we'll continue this at another time. I think it's interesting. All right, talk to you later.